Today, the team has arranged to meet with Professor Miles McCallum, an expert on Roman archaeology. Hi, Miles. They are hoping he can determine if the sword they've acquired could be an important as far piece as, of evidence. You know, iconographically, if it is obviously a representation of the demigod Hercules, mm -hmm. who's uh, a really important figure among the Romans religiously. As far as you know, how it's made, that's a bit odd. Normally, you'd expect this to be a single cast piece. Is this one not done in one piece, then? Uh, w with respect to this, I mean, looking at it, if we look down the side here, you can see where there's there's a line that goes right up through there. This suggests to me that it's a bivalve mold instead of a single lost wax oh, mold. Okay. So something again like this, this, this was never a functional sword. It's simply, you know, uh, just looking at it as we have it here, I'm, I'm highly skeptical just based on the construction technique that it's actually What is the definitive to, test uh, to see what The definitive it? test, you can do a chemical analysis of the bronze or brass. I can put you in touch with Dr. Krista Brasso, who's in the chemistry department, and she and her graduate students can, can do the testing for you. Great. If you're interested. Oh, yeah, we are. All right, well, let's do the other testing. That sounds great. Thank you very much. No problem. Very informative. Thanks, Thanks for about that sword, shall we? They did a light reflection test, which will help determine if it's bronze or uh, brass. And then they're doing Raman spectroscopy examination on it, and that's the one that'll get down to the tiny little details of it. It's kind of like a fingerprint. It's got, you know, all the different elements, what percent of each element. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm Craig. Nice to meet you. I'm Marty. Dr. Krista Brousseau is an associate professor of chemistry at St. Mary's University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. She is considered one of the leading experts in the field of electrochemistry and the study of the chemical composition of metals. Welcome to St. Mary's. Thank okay. you. Thank you. There's our artifact. There's your artifact. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you left it with me. Yep. And so we did... That was made in 1950. So when people are <laughs> dealing with a, what is a, a copper alloy artifact, um, usually the first question they're interested in is, is this a bronze? or is this a brass, right. right? And so based on whether it's a bronze or a brass is really helpful in terms of dating the object. So what we did is um, on the back, down here at the polished tip, we removed some shavings, okay. filings yep. of the base metal. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to do, basically look at the composition of the alloy, right. uh, determine percent amount of each of the different metal components. The base metal in this case is, it's a copper zinc alloy. So that tells us right away that this is a brass. And the higher the zinc content, the more modern the brass. So, you know, modern day brasses, you can get up 40, 50, 60% zinc. What did you find out about it? Here's a percent composition of the main elemental components and so what you see is the zinc content is fairly high um, and so that suggests a modern brass yeah you're, we're getting close to my 1950 <laughs> so i think yeah. you're you're looking at a post 1880 1890 date for this for sure she was basically putting pins in the the balloon we had constructed for ourselves but at the end of the day dr brousseau i think we both came to the uh, uh, understanding that it was not what we thought it would be or wanted it to be. Yeah, I, I didn't really think they were little pins going into balloons. I thought, I thought she was hitting the Blowing balloon each, up. each time with a bazooka.